What's up guys and welcome to The Addiction. As always, my name is Morphine and today we're continuing on with the speedrunning guide to Odyssey and in this section we're going over in depth of how the routing of the speedrun works. In this part of the guide I'll be breaking down the route into sections that in the end we'll be putting together everything that makes up a good route in Odyssey. In the run, we have six essential components that make up the route in its entirety, which are movement, conversations, sync points, battles, rock launching, and RNG. Having a good consistency of all these will make for a good PBE time and utilizing key elements in each part of the run that will help you reduce your run time quickly. So let's just dive into these steps and hopefully it will prepare you guys for a solid speedrun. What exactly do I mean when I say movement? Games such as Odyssey are enormous and riding or walking from place to place can determine how fast the run is going. We need to make sure that we're taking the best route to each quest marker, sync point, launch point, etc. to ensure that our pace is going smoothly. That being said, our two main ways of travel are rock launching and using Phobos. As you could already tell, our horse travels much faster than walking, even if we're in town. We can't really fully gallop, but Phobos will always be the faster option than walking. Only in specific instances in the speedrun will we walk to a location. If something of importance is close to us, it would be a better option to just walk there instead of having to waste time to call Phobos and mounting up, and yeah, you get the picture. The next major form of travel is rock launching. I'll go further into depth with rock launching later on the guide, but I want to briefly explain why it plays such a major role in movement. Rock launching has been worked with since it was founded by myself and Savu Suka way back in early 2019. Recently we have nearly perfected it, giving it a better movement throughout the run and cutting down the total runtime by a few hours. Because of this, we rarely use our ship in the speedrun and can grab specific sync points around the map to get us across the world without spending any time traveling. Another important part of the speedrun is conversations and cutscenes. Now, the game gives us the benefit to skip all cutscenes by holding down our jump key, so we won't have to go into any detail about that. However, conversations are all over the place in this game. If you've watched any Odyssey speedrun, you'll see that conversations take up a lot of time and are unfortunately unskippable. So learning the correct dialogue inputs for each option is key to making it through them quickly. Matter of fact, most runners are so quick enough with these options that you'll never see a dialogue option show up on the screen. It's basically a game of Simon Says, and remembering the combination is merely repetition. Now I am a good enough soul to sit here and go over each conversation with you on the video, but this video would probably be 3 hours long and would take loads of time editing. So instead, I've taken the extra time to write down every conversation in the speedrun in a format that goes something like this, 113 or 111114, etc., something that kind of fits that nature. This means each dialogue option that comes on screen, you'll hit the corresponding option written down in the PDF file that is posted in the video's description. Now at first, you're going to look at this and think it's completely complicated. However, the greatest gift the developers have given us is a visual and audio cue that you've made an option during spamming your spacebar or jump input correctly. This is a huge benefit to skipping conversations quickly. I wasn't lying when I said that we have a lot of conversations in the game, but I'll let you in on a secret. The best way to learn the conversation is by approaching everyone during the speedrun and just spam your one option. At the end, if you realize the conversation is repeating itself or it's not getting anywhere, then you know that's dialogue you need to remember, and you can make a mental note that you'll need to remember the correct inputs for later. It's really not that bad, seeing as how most of the conversations, you just have to spam one and the jump input as fast as you possibly can. Sync points act like desirable locations that we'll use to teleport back at a certain point in the run. 
If you've played an Assassin's Creed game in the past, then you'll get why these can play an important role in the speedrun. However, in this case, we take sync points that we will not only be traveling back to, but we will also utilize the importance of its landscape to rock launch to different locations throughout the world. For instance, we head to the abandoned watchtower just on the southern part of Boeotia and grab its sync point. If you were playing this game casually, you would think this would be a random place for a sync point since most of the important ones happen to be in the major cities. But in the speedrun, this is by far one of the most important sync points in the entire game. This is not only close to a few main storyline quests, but it also has amazing rock formations that we use five different times to take us around the world quickly. So that's it. There's not much else to say about sync points. All you really need to know is follow the run. Get the ones that we get, because you'll need to revisit those places at some point. Now, some of you might already know what rock launching is, if you've ever watched one of our speedruns before. Those who don't, Welcome to the broken part of Odyssey. You'll be defying all laws of physics, as well as giving Superman a run for his money. At least there's no rings to fly through. As stated before, rock launching is the main reason why we can even run this game so quickly. Travel alone takes so much time, having to sail and ride and walk. Sure, there's plenty of points in the speedrun where we use Phobos to ride to various locations, but those portions don't take much time at all. The longest horse riding segment in the game is in Laconia, where we have to meet our mother at the docks, and honestly, most of that is built into the quest line itself. So I'm not going to go into crazy detail about rock launching here. I've made two videos already, one showcasing the launch, and another giving a detailed demonstration on how to do it. So I'll post those in the link below, but if you ever need help with rock launching, you can always message me on Discord at any point of time, or post a comment here. Oh boy, I'm sorry that I have to go over this section with you. If there was ever a flaw with speedrunning Odyssey, it would be the RNG. It's practically everywhere. We're talking guard rotations, spawn locations, major NPC movement, ship movement and location, elite ship spawns, weather systems if you have to reload at any point, and last and most horribly, a possible soft lock. Good news about that though, it's only been documented once and has never reappeared again, but it just randomly happened. So yeah, this game can play some evil tricks on you at times. The best way to deal with RNG is simply by mastering the speedrun. You need to have situational awareness if something is going wrong, and you need to find a different route to correct it. Throughout the past year, if I would have known that this game had some much RNG, I think my overall understanding of the game would have been much better when learning how to speedrun it. Luckily for you, you won't have to worry about that. So I know this is a lot of talk about bad RNG in the game, so what about the good RNG? Because, you know, there's usually two sides of RNG. Well, that's the thing. If everything is going right, meaning no mercenary spawns in your way, no having to track enemy captains down because they didn't spawn in the correct tent, Marini having basic motor skills and moving like normal, or enemy vessels staying out of your way in the worst of times, topped with perfect rock launching and movement, that's pretty much the best run that you can get in my book. Sure, RNG can slow you down at times, but it doesn't mean that you won't have a faster time. Sometimes taking the bad RNG and working with it could save you time in the end. Odyssey is not even close to being fully beaten yet. We've been pushing the times down considerably over the past few months, and it's only going to continue that way. More importantly, we need you guys to help us try to get that time down. So if you've never done a speedrun before, and you want to start here like I did, how do you begin? The best way is to always look at the top runner in each category that you want to run and learn the route. Follow specific movements, grab the same sync points as we do, battle your way through RNG that could be in your favor, and mastering the flight of rock launching and you'll be right up there with the top of the leaderboard. I'm always open to helping anyone learn the speedrun, and don't hesitate to leave a comment or concern, and I'll be sure to get back with you as quickly as I can. 
Odyssey is such an amazing game, and a much more amusing game to speedrun. Thanks for watching guys, and stick around for our last segment of the speedrunning guide where I talk tips, tricks, and useful pointers to save you time. I'll see you guys in the next video.